This training video will help you use the National Fire Incident Reporting System, otherwise known as NIFRS. All of our reports 2013 and beyond will go into this National Fire Reporting System. To use the system, you will click on the icon that is on the screen. This will be this, your next screen. You'll enter the state, your username, which is your first initial and last name, and then your password. If you're a firefighter, your password is firefighter. The plus or equals key, which is located to the left of the backspace button, and your 300 number. If you're a firefighter medic, is FF medic, the plus or equals button, and your 300 number. Then your next screen, just click OK. Okay, from this screen, you'll click the New Incident button. The date is populated. You want to enter an in incident number. We'll be using the last two digits of the year, which is 13. 01 for the month. Next month, we'll be using 02. A zero to separate, and then a CRN. If your CRN is 6, B06. This is your exposure. This is where you list how many exposures you had. Uh, most of the time it will be zero. And if you had a house with an adjacent shed, the shed caught on fire. As a result of the house catching on fire, then you had one exposure, B001. Our ID is already populated, states populated as well. If you're at station five, you will enter station five and click Save. Um, the next area is the incident uh, key information. Over to the left you see the existing modules which is your key information or your basic. Most of our fires will fall under the basic module. And if you notice down below there is a section with a drop down screen where you can add additional modules. If you have a civilian fire death then of course you can click the civilian fire casualty tab and it will add additional information to the basic module. But like I said, most of ours will be the basic module. Okay, if you, and this way, if you remove the street address, it will give you other uh, options. If you had a fire in front of another business, it will be in front of or the rear of, but most of the time it will probably be the street address. Like I said, all these uh, yellow areas must be completed. These are mandatory fields. This will be your street or highway name, city, state, zip code. This is the incident type area. You click on the box, it will give you a drop down screen of all kinds of uh, fire types. And closer to the bottom is a uh, option for fire other, which is 100. And this area is if we receive mutual aid from another agency as if we borrowed a tanker or we caught mutual aid from Effingham and they brought a tanker over then we would add this area use this area to add that information. This is your date and time area. The date's already populated. You can change it if you're putting in a report from an earlier date and your times will go here. Each time you click the next tab, it will save the information for you. This is the action that we took. Most of the time will be extinguished, but you see there's other options that we can that we can add. But for this training, we'll just put extinguish. This you can enter the number of apparatus um, that came to the scene. If you had two fire trucks, you enter two there. If you had eight personnel, you enter eight. VMS came, had one ambulance with two MS personnel. If anybody else came, whether it be EMA or anybody else that came to help us, you enter that information here. Most of the time we won't know the property loss amount or the contents. But if we know at a later date, we can always add it. This, if we had a fire service fatality, we'd enter here or injury any kind of other deaths or injuries, we would add that here. 
depending on the type of fire you had, this may light up yellow for you to indicate whether a smoke detector alerted the homeowners. Uh, the state and federal governments do track this type of information, so it is important to add it if it's yellow. This area kind of specifies what the property was used for. Obviously, you have types of businesses, and if you keep on scrolling down, you'll have a home or kind of a residential type location. And for this, we'll use residential other. Click our next tab. If you know the name of a business with the business owners, you can add that here. This is just another area for businesses or um, address of the business. In this area, even though it's not yellow, this is where our narrative goes. This is mandatory on all fire reports. This area is not yellow, but we do need to add the officer in charge and the member making the report. If you're in charge, you had command, and you're also doing the report, then you will put your information in here, and you can click same as officer in charge, and it will populate the area for you. And as you see here, it's just saving all the information. Sometimes it will be slow, but all this information is saved directly onto the uh, FEMA fire um, server and database. So sometimes it will be slower than others. Okay, here's an area for special studies. Right now we are not participating in any studies, so this would stay, stay blank. Now while that's saving, you see over the side over here, like I said, this has got critical errors. It will not let you uh, finish until all these are done. Like I said, most of the time, if you have all your yellow boxes filled um, towards the end of the report, this will uh, go away, indicating that you have completed the report correctly and you're ready to save it. Okay, that completes this uh, training video. In a real life uh, situation or scenario, like I said, this will not be here and you will be allowed to save the report um, completely. But like I said, once your yellow, all your yellow uh, fields are successfully populated, this will go away and you will be allowed to save the report. Thank you.